Welcome to Go Grand China. I am Ping. Today I'm going to show you around the Little Wild Goose Pagoda Scenic Area. This scenic area is made up of three parts. The first part is the Jianfu Temple, built in 684 AD. The second part is the Little Wild Goose Pagoda, which was built in the year 707. And the third part is the Xi'an Museum. Uh, this Little Wild Goose Pagoda was, was enlisted as a World Heritage Site in 2014. Okay, once we enter the north gate of the Little Wild Goose Pagoda Scenic Area, uh, the first thing we will see is a shadow puppet show. And actually, this place is named the Traditional Cultural Exchange Center. Let's go inside and look. There's a little tiny garden here with a pagoda in the center. We have the tangible cultural heritage project with shadow play, puppet show, tile rubbing, and also a terracotta a warrior. The real warrior is in the museum of the terracotta army. This one, I am 200% sure, is a replica. There are tea houses here. Here, there is the shadow puppet theater. The Chinese uh, shadow puppet was inscribed in 2011 on the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity by UNESCO. Let's go inside and look. Okay. We have the show now here. The ticket is about 30 Chinese yuan. The show will last for 20 to 30 minutes. There's a whale here. A very tiny bucket. We are now inside the Jianfu Temple. The buildings that make up Jianfu Temple were never intended to be a temple when they were first built. It was the residence of Prince Li Xian the third son of Emperor Gaozong and the Empress Regnant Wu Zetian. In the year 683, Emperor Gaozong died. Li Xian ascended the throne and became Emperor Zhongzong. On the 100-day anniversary of the death of Emperor Gaozong, the Empress Regnant Wu, this new Empress mother decided to build a Buddhist, Buddhist temple to honor her memory. Emperor Zhongzong adapted his place of residence into a Buddhist temple. It was named the Xianfu Temple, the temple of offered blessings. Xianfu in Chinese means offered blessings. Emperor Gaozong was later dismissed by his mother the Empress Regnant Wu. In 390, Empress Regnant Wu 
proclaimed herself as a ruler of the Zhou Dynasty. Thus, from 690 to 705, the Chinese, the Chinese Empire was named the Zhou Dynasty. Wu's Zhou Dynasty was founded by her, and it with, within her lifetime, with her abdication in 705 AD. <laughs> So this is the little Wagu's pagoda. In the year 706, monk Yi Jin started to translate Buddhist sutra here at the Jianfu Temple. He needed a place to store all the Buddhist scriptures that he brought back from India. He learned from monk Xuanzang who built the big Wagu's pagoda in 652 AD to store the 557 scriptures that uh, Xuanzang brought back from India to China. So monk Yi Jin proposed to Emperor Zhongzong to build a pagoda. He got the fund and the construction started in 707. Two years later, in 709, this little Wagu's pagoda was completed. It stood 45 meters high, and the 45 meter is uh, 147 feet, with 15 levels of tiers until 1556, the Shanxi earthquake. The top two stories were shaken off by this earthquake. The current pagoda stands at a height of 43 meters, which is 141 feet, with 13 levels of tiers. Because the Waigu's pagoda was much higher than this pagoda, the newly built pagoda was given the name of Little Waigu's Pagoda in 709. In 707, before this pagoda was built, the architect already took the precautions against earthquakes because there were quite a lot of reports on earthquakes happened here in Xi'an. The architect had the foresight to make the base of this pagoda out of packed and the rammed earth and the build the base into a hemispherical shape. With the packed and the rammed earth base during earthquakes, the tremors would be distributed evenly throughout the base of the pagoda and the pagoda subsequently. Because of this genius architectural design, the Little Wagus Pagoda survived 70 earthquakes since its completion in 709. Here is the north entrance of the Little Wagus Pagoda. From here you can climb to the top, but it's uh, actually locked here. Uh, there's a stone template at this entrance which recorded miracles that happened on this pagoda. In the year 1487, an earthquake estimated at magnitude 6 sent a crack which was 30 centimeters wide all the way up to the top of the pagoda from top to bottom. 34 years later in 1521, another earthquake took place here and this quack sealed the crack. In the year 1556, the deadliest earthquake ever recorded in human history took place in Xi'an. The epicenter of this earthquake was in Huaxian, about 120 kilometers east of Xi'an. This earthquake was estimated at magnitude 8 and it is reported that uh, 830,000 people lost their lives. This earthquake created another crack on the pagoda. And eight years later, in 1564, another earthquake sealed the crack again. In the year 1621, an earthquake created a crack on the pagoda for the third time. 30, 30 years later, in 1691, the crack got sealed for the third time again. In 1964, the pagoda underwent an 
extensive repairs. It is a pity that this pagoda is now closed for climbing. Otherwise, you will find that when you enter the pagoda on the second, fifth, seventh, ninth, and eleventh stories, you can see reinforced steel girders, and also on the top, they have facilities set up so that、uh, lightning can be prevented and is better protected from rain on the top. Okay, here is the little Argus pagoda from its south. This gentleman is a musician. He's playing pipa. Here's the Little Agus Pagoda from its south. The two-story. A building here in front of us used to be the Buddhist text library. In the 1920s, and、uh, this temple was somewhat destroyed by warlords. So the uh, Buddhist uh, statues or Buddha images inside this Buddhist、uh, text library. Were destroyed. Now it is a tiny museum and a little shop inside. No more Buddha statues here in this Buddhist text library. Another museum. The building behind the pavilion is the most important uh, uh, building in this、uh, Buddhist temple. It is named the Mahavira Hall, and the Mahavira Hall is normally the place where、uh, Buddha statues. And、uh, images of uh, uh, Bodhisattvas are enshrined and worshipped in China. It is a great pity that、uh, the Buddha images and the statues were destroyed in 1920s. So now, and、uh, this building houses a museum. The last time they renovate. The Little Agus Pagoda was in 1964. This is how the pagoda looked like before the last renovation. Ancient trees and stone temples, and pavilions. Here we have four more、uh, st stone tablets recording 
uh, renovations of this temple and also the pagoda in different period of time. There are quite a lot of Asian trees here in this garden and uh, the tree here is a uh, 800 year old catalpa tree and ancient trees are numbered for better uh, protection and uh, this tree is numbered 44. Uh, this building is named the Cixi uh, Pavilion in Chinese and the Cixi is a Chinese, Chinese name for Maitreya Buddha so probably the better name should be Maitreya Buddha Hall and uh, the Buddha image or Buddha statues were destroyed in 1920s so now up to the second floor once you get into it there is nothing inside and uh, here is the view of the small wild goose pagoda from the second floor of Cixi Pavilion uh, this uh, 1300 year old tree is named the Japanese Pagoda tree the latter name is uh, Safara Japonica and I think uh, they made a mistake to name this tree because this tree is native to China kind of strange to name it the Japanese pagoda tree and uh, actually there is another name for this tree which is uh, uh, Chinese scholar tree anyway this tree is uh, 1300 years old after passing the Hall of Heavenly Kings normally you will see two pagodas in your front the one to your right would be the bell tower the one to the left see here this one the one to the left would be the drum tower and the bell and the drum in the ancient times were used three four times inside this uh, bell tower there is a huge uh, steel a bell forged in 1192 and this bell weighs 10,000 kilograms the four Chinese words there means uh, bell chimey in the morning and the small wild goose pagoda and uh, this was one of the eight scenic attractions of Xi'an in ancient times In 1997, a replica a bell was forged here for people to rent it. It cost about 10 yuan to rent it, I think, five times. Probably, if you rent a bell, it will bring you good luck. Here we see the mountain gate again from the inside. And uh, now, uh, this mountain gate is closed for visiting. And the visitors need to arrive at this Jianfu temple from the north gate and uh, the mountain gate is as a matter of fact our Ming dynasty architecture and it was uh, uh, built here in the year 1449 during the reign of Emperor Yinzong of the Ming dynasty Since 684, this Jim Fu temple has experienced uh, many destructions and uh, renovations. Uh, the, lar the last large scale renovation took place in the Ming dynasty from 1432 to 1449. And uh, this front gate or mountain gate was completed in 1449 and uh, the roof is typical of the Ming dynasty 
architecture. And we have four uh, Chinese characters there. Says Zui Sheng Fa Men, the best approach to enlightenment. Among all the monks of Jianfu Temple, Monk Yijing was the most distinguished. It was here in Jianfu Temple from 706 to 713. He translated 108 volumes of Buddhist sutras from Sanskrit into Chinese. He died here at Jianfu Temple in 713. Jianfu Temple thus became one of the three translation institutes of Buddhist scriptures in China because of him. Jing was a Buddhist monk famed as a traveler and a translator. He was, um, he was the third Chinese monk who traveled to the Buddhist university at uh, Nailander in India's Bihar to study Buddhism. Traveling by a Persian boat out of Guangzhou in 671, he stopped in Sumatra, today's Indonesia, to study Sanskrit, Malay language. Yijin recorded his impression of the Kunlun people, which is the ancient Chinese name for Malay people. Kunlun people have curly hair, dark bodies, bare feet, and wear sarongs. If you are interested to see how a Kunlun man look, looks like, you may pay a visit to the Shanxi History Museum. You will find a pottery Kunlun man on the second floor's Tang Dynasty exhibition. Yijin stayed at uh, the Buddhist University of Nalanda in India for 11 years to study Buddhism. In 695, he returned to China and Luoyang with 400 Buddhist sutras. A beautiful wood carving in the garden of Jianfu Temple. Look at the details. Okay, and uh, this uh, Little Wild Goose Pagoda Syndic area has a large collection of Hitchin posts. And uh, those Hitchin posts were once part of house gates, and uh, their function was to tie horses for visitors or for uh, the owners. And uh, this Hichun posts are upright pillars with various carvings on the top, including carvings of mythological creatures, deities, and uh, auspicious symbols. And uh, in this Little Wagus Pagoda Snake area, all of the Hichun posts have been placed together to form what looks like a stunning stone forest. This heat turn post. See this man is riding a line and he's got uh, a monkey on his back. The third part of the Little Wagus Pagoda scenic area is Xi'an Museum. So here is a Xi'an Museum. Here there are two stone horses and they look very small they look brand new and uh, I think uh, they must be replicas because I have been to all those 18 Tang Dynasty Emperor's tombs 
I have never seen such such ugly looking horses there. There are a group of interesting stone carved uh, lions and uh, turtles and the one here this must be a base for stone tablets and it's uh, a turtle uh, the Chinese believe that this kind of turtle is the fifth child of a dragon and his job is to carry heavy loads so they always put a heavy big and tall huge stone tablet on his back okay some more uh, turtle for carrying stone tablets and these two lovely lines and the two horses to know where they're from uh, Xi'an Museum houses nearly 130,000 cultural relics that all relate to the history of Xi'an and ancient China. Uh, most of these relics have been discovered from tombs around Xi'an. Okay, let's go to the museum to see what's inside. We will travel to a city. I think that the best way to know the city is to go and visit the museum of the city so Xi'an museum is the best way for us to understand Xi'an so here is the lobby of Xi'an museum Here is the layout of the Chinese capital city Chang'an in the Tang Dynasty from 618 to 907. And according to historic, historical record, the Tang Dynasty Chinese capital already had a population of 1 million people. There were about 80,000 foreigners living here in the city and uh, right here in the middle we have the central axis the street is named uh, scarlet bird street which is uh, 155 meters wide okay the street here is the scarlet bird street it used to be 155 meters wide and uh, this street separates China into two parts east China and west China and the East China has 54 blocks and the West China has another 54 blocks. So there are a total of 108 blocks. Well, the most beautiful part of China city was here, the Chujiang Lake. And also here is uh, where the Big Wa Goose Pagoda located in the Tang Dynasty.